Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this diffuse mapping tutorial. I'm going to be using this uh, hexagonal paved floor texture um, to create the diffuse map. I grabbed it from cgtextures.com I believe it is. So if you haven't been on that site and you're looking for textures that are high quality and you know you get quite a number of tiled textures too which is quite good and you know it's, it's completely free you have full rights to use them in your uh, games and your projects as long as you make an account there of course um, so what we're going to do is first thing we're going to do is make sure that this texture is the correct size so if we go to image and image size we're gonna go and I mean this is this is a weird texture size, man. This is so weird. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna upscale this to 1024. Um, usually what I would do is maybe bring it down to 512 by 512, but hmm. actually yeah, let's put it down to 512 by 512. We don't want to actually start stretching out this texture and make it you know make it ugly because uh, what what will happen is it will blur the texture quite badly. So what we do is we go to 512. This is a really weird texture where they don't quite match up. So I'm gonna just unlink the width and the height and actually make both of them 512 by 512. There we go. Now file save as. Make sure you save it as. I mean here here are some that I created earlier, but we're gonna be going with the floor hexagonal diffuse. So you want to make sure you name it with diffuse in the file name. Now the reason for that is obviously so everything's clear. So if you can see here we've got the bump map which we're going to be creating later, uh, the specular. Uh, this is the original file which I actually don't need anymore. And then also the normal map as well. So it's really good because you, you can really easily um, tell which one's which. Obviously I've got the, the thumbnails here anyway but for whatever reason if you had it in a list like that then it's still very easy to know which one is which rather than just having texture one texture two texture three etc so I'm gonna go with diffuse I'm gonna hit yes uh, to overwrite if you don't already have it existing then it's not gonna give you that message um, you're gonna set the quality up to 12 that's very important because if you don't then what will happen is it will compress it and uh, it will, you know it will just be maybe distorted in some way or lose detail as well so you don't want to have that set that to 12 next thing we're going to go into 3ds max now in 3ds max let me just reset this to make sure it's completely fresh um, we're going to be going into the perspective view so you want to maximize this perspective view by going down into the bottom right hand corner and hovering over the maximize viewport toggle click on that and it will maximize the view next what you want to do is go to plane and you're going to be clicking and dragging out a plane like that Okay, just on onto the floor, onto the grid, I guess, and then you're going to be changing the size to 300 by 300. Now the number might vary on your one because mine is set to CMs, so yours might be something like 500 or 1,000 by 1,000 or 100 by 100. But as long as it kind of roughly fits the size of the grid, um, it's not really that important to be fair. Um, next, what we're going to do is just reduce the length segments and the width segments. We don't need them there because all of our surface effects are going to be uh, and surface detail is going to be caused um, we're going to be using just materials textures to uh, show those we're not going to actually add any geometry to this plane um, next what we're going to do is we're going to remove the grid by pressing the G key on the keyboard and then we're going to be pressing the M key to bring up the material editor okay so this is where we're going to bring in we're going to bring in the diffuse map so we click on uh, the first blank material it's always good to name your material, so I'm going to call this uh, just floor. You can be a bit more specific if you like. Um, if you were going to export this model into an engine like Unreal 4, then it's good to be specific in your file name. Uh, sorry, in your material name. If it's just set as default uh, 02, 03, default 04, default, it's going to be really difficult for you to sort of tell which textures which uh, in a game engine. So just really good practice to. You know start naming your materials um, next we're going to go down to maps and we're going to go to diffuse color so diffuse color is a channel where we apply the diffuse map which is our color map that's the the, the surface texture of our object so we're going to then go and find the floor hexagonal diffuse so that's the one it's the diffuse map double click that go to parent which is very important and then what you do is you make sure your object is selected so you're going to click on that and then we're going to go on to assign material to selection and then show shaded material in viewport okay so there you can see that is the diffuse 
Now, in some instances, it can look quite blurry. Um, mine might be blurry because it's only a 512 by 512 material, so it's not really that high res. Uh, in real terms, if you were going to play this game, you wouldn't see the material this close. You'd probably be a little further away like this, possibly, uh, walking on top of this small paving. Um, but what you can do to up the resolution in your viewport is you can go into the plus button or the plus icon just here in the top left go down to configure viewports go into display performance so by default it will be on uh, visual style and appearance go into display performance and change your texture maps to 1024 now mine wouldn't make any difference if it was 512 because my texture is actually 512 by 512 but if you have a bigger texture make sure you set this to at least 1024 and then hit apply and OK and then you should be able to see a difference if it was set quite low uh, in your in your options. OK, so that is a diffuse map. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to soon be releasing how to create a specular map and a bump map. So stay tuned for that, guys, and I'll catch you next time.